technician uh, with the DBC's Hudson River Fisheries Unit uh, down in Region 3. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit today about some work we've been doing on uh, describing populations of uh, white catfish and channel catfish in the Hudson River Estuary. Uh, so the reason we started looking at catfish in the estuary was uh, there's been an apparent uh, decline in white catfish abundance over the last 20 years that seems to have coincided with uh, uh, substantial increase in channel catfish around that same time. Uh, white catfish are native to the Hudson River estuary. Um, channel catfish are not. Uh, channel catfish were first documented in the Hudson uh, around the mid-1970s. Uh, since the late 90s or early 2000s, um, have become established in greater numbers. Uh, and just for some context, we think we all know where the Hudson River is, but it's a little south of us there. It flows 152 miles south from Troy into New York Harbor. Um, and it's uh, an important uh, spawning ground and nursery area for several uh, anadromous species. Uh, this map here uh, is the native and non-native distribution of uh, white catfish in the United States. Um, white catfish are native to Atlantic coastal drainages from New York south to Florida. Um, and as indicated by this big red arrow here, uh, the Hudson River estuary is the northern uh, extent of white catfishes native to ancient the US. <coughs> Uh, I think we all are probably aware that channel catfish have proliferated well outside of their native range in the United States and abroad. Um, but I wanted to point out that they are native to the Great Lakes range in western New York. Um, and it's speculated in the literature that on um, one pathway uh, I wish they arrived in the Hudson River might have been the Erie Canal. Um, Rich talked a little bit about that earlier this morning. Uh, the second uh, hypothesis is uh, illegal stocking and uh, one of the major tributaries of the Hudson. And so uh, one of the first uh, looks at channel catfish in the Hudson River estuary was Hughes and Carlson in the 1980s, uh, prior to channel catfish uh, becoming uh, established. Um, and in their paper, they described the growth and life history of white catfish prior to channel catfish becoming established. Uh, and they reported um, spawning occurring in the northern part of the estuary um, uh, around July, primarily on uh, sandy shoal habitats and uh, rock piles. Um, they also uh, speculated that white catfish exhibited seasonal movements into brackish water in the fall and winter, which is a typical little species throughout the native range. Uh, they also estimated a uh, large population of the Hudson from some tag return data that they collected. Uh, 20 years later, uh, Jordan and his colleagues published a paper on white catfish and channel catfish populations in the Hudson River. Uh, and they looked at um, habitat use and uh, growth. Um, and they documented uh, differences um, river-wide for white channel catfish habitat use uh, between the upper and lower estuary and speculated that uh, their flexibility and habitat use may have been a mechanism uh, by which they were able to be established um, in the Hudson River. Um, they also looked at uh, uh, H age and length data for both white catfish and channel catfish and reported that channel catfish uh, grew faster than white catfish. Um, and they looked at uh, body conditions in the Hudson River among their sampling regions and noted that white catfish um, had lower uh, relative weights values um, in the lower, their lower sampling regions uh, compared to the upper part of the estuary, whereas channel catfish did not, uh, where relative weight did not vary in the sampling regions. Uh, and then a similar shift in white catfish to channel catfish ratios was uh, reported in the Delaware River by Keller in 2011. Uh, he noted seasonal differences in body condition among his sampling regions, um, likely a result of uh, spawning times and environmental factors. And he suggested that differences in the spring pre-spawn uh, body condition might reflect um, differences in uh, optimal feeding conditions for each species, possibly another mechanism uh, for their ability to be established in that system. And so we fast forward to 2019, uh, channel catfish are the dominant catfish species in the Hudson River estuary. So this project, we wanted to look at um, trends in relative abundance for both species over time uh, using a long-term data set from the Hudson River Biological Monitoring Program. Um, and then using biological data collected incidentally uh, from an adrenous fishery survey. So we wanted to look at uh, growth and condition for each species. Each species. And then finally, uh, flood out some of the uh, goals of this research and highlight the importance of long-term monitoring for, monitoring for uh, documenting changes in uh, fish communities. And so uh, we calculated uh, catch and effort um, from uh, trawl data collected as a part of the Hudson River Biological Monitoring Program. 
Uh, we have uh, 40 years of data from 1974 to 2014 on catfish uh, got collected in the trawl survey that sampled the shoal habitats up and down the river um, from uh, July to November uh, for that time period. In addition to these data, we also have uh, some biological data collected um, during uh, the Adirus Fishery Sand Surveys conducted uh, in May from 1984 to um, 2019. And so, this right here is just the uh, proportion of the catfish catch for all of the uh, DEC uh, surveys conducted since the mid-1980s. And uh, what you see here is that uh, we start catching channel catfish somewhere around the early 2000s. And uh, then as you go, obviously as you move forward uh, in the time series, um, the catch is almost exclusively channel catfish. Uh, that's catching less than 10% white catfish in the most recent years. Uh, and so these plots here are from the uh, mean catch per annual catch per unit effort from the trawl survey data. Um, the white dots are uh, white catfish and the black dots are uh, channel catfish. Uh, the plot on the left is looking at young of the year um, abundance from 1974 to 2014. Uh, we see a uh, substantial increase in channel catfish young of the year abundance starting in the late 90s or early 2000s uh, as white catfish young of the year abundance drops to some of the lowest values in the time series uh, at the same time. Uh, the plot on the right is looking at uh, catfish that are considered to be uh, yearlings or older from the, that same uh, trawl survey. Uh, and what we see is uh, around the mid-90s, uh, white catfish abundance seems to decline as uh, channel catfish abundance increases. Uh, it's less pronounced for the adults, though. And so uh, take a finer scale look at the upper portion of the estuary. Um, we see, this is young, these are young of the year data for both white catfish and channel catfish. Uh, the same pattern emerges where early, uh, in the early 2000s, late 90s, uh, white catfish uh, during the year abundance drops to next to nothing uh, as uh, channel catfish abundance increases substantially. Um, and in the lower uh, sampling regions uh, of the estuary, uh, young of the year abundance for both species is generally pretty low. Um, caught a couple white catfish, it looks like, earlier on in the time series. And looking at the uh, yearling and older catfish from that same survey, uh, at, in the upper reaches of the estuary, that uh, pattern emerges where in the early 2000s, uh, channel catfish abundance increases, white catfish abundance drops down to uh, values that are lower than any uh, point in the time series. Um, and then in the lower part of the estuary, the catch is almost ex exclusively white catfish for um, the yearlings and older. Um, this is likely a result of the seasonal downstream movement towards brackish water. Um, and probably reflects that cat, uh, white catfish have a um, higher salinity tolerance uh, compared to uh, channel catch. Mm. And so this plot is from uh, one of the year class reports from the biological monitoring program. It looks at the spatio-temporal distribution of uh, yearling and older white catfish in the Hudson River. And so uh, this axis here is the sampling regions uh, moving north to south, and then uh, the sampling week from July through November. And so this. Uh, is consistent with which with the downstream uh, seasonal movements reported in the literature, where uh, white catfish are, in a high water, are caught primarily in the freshwater regions uh, earlier in the sampling period uh, in July during the spawning season, and then later in the fall and winter uh, they move into more brackish water. Uh, it's speculated that they move upstream to seek um, optimum spawning habitat in the spring. And so ultimately, with these data, we wanted to test the um, biotic, abiotic constraining hypothesis with um, these fish. Uh, and so it speculates that uh, um, in the presence of a uh, competitor and a predator, uh, abundance is controlled largely by their, the presence of the uh, predator and the competitor. And then the absence of that biological control, abiotic factors are what determine um, abundance for the native fish. And so, Without controlling for abiotic factors, we just plotted out in the year channel catfish abundance against white catfish abundance. And it appears that um, for both yearlings and adult catfish, uh, white catfish abundance is highest uh, when channel catfish abundance um, is at its lowest. Um, so uh, with these data in mind, we wanted to take a look at um, some of the length weight data that we had available to us um, from the Natural Fishery Surveys to try to tease out some mechanisms uh, by which uh, channel catfish may be out competing with catfish. <coughs> and so uh, we looked at um, length weight relationships um, for, um, for uh, four different time periods where we have data for white catfish. 
and we uh, observed that uh, incremental weight gain is uh, significantly lower in the, for the most recent uh, sampling time periods as opposed to uh, the time sampling time period prior to channel catfish being established. Um, and a similar pattern emerges when we look at uh, relative weights in these time periods, with uh, the most uh, recent time periods being significantly lower than the time period prior to channel catfish arriving um, in the early 2000s, or not arriving, but becoming established. Um, and these fish were all collected in the spring as a part from for uh, in the Anadromous Fisheries Survey is targeting striped bass, American shad, and river herring. So these are all uh, pre-spawn pre spring white catfish. Um, there's not a comparable uh, time series for channel catfish, but for the uh, time periods where we do have cat, uh, we've caught them in significant num uh, numbers, uh, there's no change in uh, with relative uh, weight. And so the last three years or so, we've been uh, aging these catfish with, uh, with pectoral spines. Uh, these are just some preliminary mean length of age data that we have. Um, and so from these data, it appears that uh, the first three years of life, uh, channel catfish and white craft fish grow at a, um, at a similar rate. Uh, however, channel catfish do grow to a larger size than white catfish and appear to grow faster um, after age three, um, which is consistent with, with, with what's reported in the literature. And so just to summarize here, um, white catfish abundance has declined in the last 20 years, coinciding with uh, the establishment of channel catfish in the estuary. Uh, and then river-wide, uh, high abundance of uh, white catfish appears to be dependent on a lower abundance of uh, channel catfish. Um, white catfish body condition is significantly lower um, for the most recent uh, time periods compared to time periods prior to channel catfish uh, being established in great numbers. And then um, from the data that we've collected so far, it appears that uh, channel catfish do indeed grow faster than white catfish in the estuary. So obviously there's some limitations from using uh, incidents and catch data to make inferences about these populations. Uh, moving forward, we want to continue to uh, take pectoral spines and uh, look at the age structure of catfish in the Hudson River and uh, build growth models from these data. Uh, and also uh, take a um, uh, finer scale look at abiotic factors that influence the abundance of catfish and uh, to, so to test the uh, biotic and abiotic concerning hypothesis with these uh, fish. So these long-term monitoring programs are valuable for um, describing differences, changes in fish communities and the um, establishment of non-native and invasive species in uh, these systems. Uh, particularly important for quantifying the impacts of uh, freshwater invaders into the Hudson River estuary um, using these data. Uh, then incidental catch data from uh, our anadromous fisheries surveys are where we got uh, the, um, uh, data for some of the length weight relationships and these are valuable for making uh, these kind of broad inferences about the non-target populations that were captured in these surveys. Um, and then finally I want to just say thanks to the staff of the Hudson River Fisheries Unit for letting me do this project and helping me out uh, with some of the analysis. Thanks guys. And, uh,